Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video I'll use my Windows 10 Enterprise DVD to manually create a bootable Windows 10 USB flash drive. Once the bootable USB flash drive has been created, you'll be able to install Windows 10 from the USB drive in much the same way as you can from the Windows DVD. So let's get started. Before I change over to my Windows 10 computer and create the bootable USB flash drive, let's first discuss what a bootable USB flash drive actually is. A bootable USB flash drive is essentially a USB drive that contains all of the Windows 10 installation files. That is, a bootable USB flash drive contains the exact same files that are found on a Windows 10 DVD. Once you've created your bootable USB flash drive, you can then boot your computer from the flash drive and install Windows 10. USB flash drives are faster and more robust than optical drives. This makes them an attractive method for installing Windows 10 for some administrators. Now we know what a bootable USB flash drive is, let's now take a look at the requirements for creating a bootable USB flash drive. To manually create a bootable USB flash drive, you'll need to have access to your Windows 10 installation files. These files can be located either on a Windows 10 DVD or on an ISO file if you purchased Windows 10 online and downloaded the operating system. Regardless of where you obtain your install files, you'll need these files to hand when creating your bootable USB flash drive. Next, you'll have to have a USB flash drive. According to Microsoft, this flash drive must have at least 4 GB capacity. Anything smaller than this will not have enough capacity for the install files. The next requirement is a computer that has at least one USB port. If you're using a Windows 10 DVD to obtain your install files, this computer must also have a DVD drive. Alternatively, if you're using an ISO file to obtain your install files, this computer must be running a Windows operating system that is capable of mounting ISO files. Until an ISO file is mounted, the install files contained in the ISO file cannot be accessed. Windows 8, Windows 8.1 and Windows 10 are all capable of mounting ISO files out of the box. If you're using an older operating system such as Windows XP, Windows Vista or Windows 7, you cannot mount an ISO file natively. However, Microsoft has developed a free tool called the Microsoft Virtual CD-ROM Control Panel. If you're running one of these older operating systems, downloading and installing this tool will allow you to mount the ISO file. See the description of this video for a link to the Microsoft Virtual CD-ROM Control Panel tool if you require it. Now that we know what a bootable USB flash drive is and what is required to create one manually, I'll now change over to my Windows 10 computer to demonstrate the process of creating the flash drive. From the desktop of my Windows 10 computer, I'll first open File Explorer from the taskbar. Once in File Explorer, I will select This PC on the left. Under the Devices and Drives heading, you can see the drives for this computer. As you can see, this computer has two drives. The first drive is my C drive, which contains my Windows 10 operating system, and the second is my D drive, which is the optical DVD drive for this computer. In this demonstration, I'll be using my Windows 10 Enterprise DVD to obtain the install files for my USB drive. So I'll now insert my Windows 10 Enterprise DVD into this computer. The DVD has now been inserted. Notice that my optical drive has detected the presence of the DVD. The next step is to insert the USB flash drive that I want to make bootable. The USB flash drive has now been inserted. Notice that my flash drive is now appearing under the Drives and Devices heading as a new drive, the E drive. This USB drive is 8 GB in capacity and should be more than enough to store the Windows 10 install files. To create a bootable USB flash drive, we first need to prepare the USB drive. To do this, we'll use a command prompt called Disk Part. To access Disk Part, I'll right click on my Start button and I will open a command prompt with administrative privileges. 
Once in the command prompt, we need to launch the disk part tool. To launch disk part, simply enter the command disk part and press enter. Notice that the command prompt is now prefixed with the disk part command. This is how we know we're in the disk part tool. Now that we're in disk part, the first task is to shift the focus of the tool to the USB drive. To do this, I will enter the command list disk and press enter. This will cause disk part to list all of the disks installed in this computer. In my case, this computer has three disks installed, disk 0, disk 1 and disk 2. From the list of disks, I'll need to select the disk that represents my USB flash drive. The easiest way to do this is to look at the size of the disks. As you can see, disk 2 in my computer is reporting a size of 7629 megabytes, which is approximately 8 gigabytes. Therefore, disk 2 has to be my USB flash drive. To shift the focus of disk part to my USB flash drive, I will enter the command select disk 2 and will press enter. Disk part will then report back stating that disk 2 is now the selected disk. From now on, all future commands that are run in disk part will run directly against disk 2. Having selected our USB flash drive, our next need to erase the flash drive. If you have any important data on your flash drive, be sure to move it off to a different location before you continue. To erase the flash drive, I'll run the command clean and will press enter. This will destroy all of the data on the USB flash drive, including all the partitions and their file systems. Disk part will report back afterwards that disk part succeeded in cleaning the disk. The next task is to repartition the USB flash drive and create a single partition that occupies all of the available space on the flash drive. To do this, I will run the command create partition primary and will press enter. Assuming the partition was created correctly, disk part will report back stating that disk part succeeded in creating the specified partition. To prove that this is the only partition on the USB drive, I will next run the command list partition and will press enter. After running this command, disk part will list all of the partitions on this USB drive. As you can see, there is just one partition listed, partition 1. Also notice that partition 1 has a size of 7628 megabytes, the entire size of the drive. The next step is to format this partition with a file system. To format the partition, I will need to shift the focus of disk parts to partition 1. To do this, I'll run the command select partition 1 and will press enter. Disk part will then report back that partition 1 is now the selected partition. With disk part now focused on partition 1, any future commands I run at this point will run against partition 1. To format partition 1, I will run the command format fs equals ntfs. This command will perform a full format of partition 1 with the ntfs file system and will also scan the USB drive for bad sectors. Full format can take a significant amount of time to complete though. To reduce the amount of time the format takes, you can optionally add the quick parameter. The quick parameter ensures that the partition is formatted but does not scan the USB drive for bad sectors. With the quick parameter, the format will complete in a matter of moments but doesn't check the disk for damaged sectors. To save time, I will on this occasion run the command with the quick parameter added. As you can see, the format is now complete and took just a few seconds. Assuming the format didn't encounter any problems, disk part will report back that disk part successfully formatted the volume. Now the partition is created and formatted, I will next need to make the USB drive bootable. To make the drive bootable, the partition needs to be marked as active. To mark partition 1 as active, I will simply run the command active and will press enter. Disk part will confirm that this was successful by feeding back disk part marked the current partition as active. The USB flash drive is now fully prepared. So I will now leave the disk part tool by entering the command exit and will press enter. This will return us to the regular command prompt. 
With the USB drive prepared and bootable, the final step is to copy all of the install files from the Windows 10 DVD onto the USB flash drive. To perform this step, I'll need to know the drive letters for both my DVD drive and my USB flash drive. As you can see in File Explorer, the drive letter for my DVD drive is D, and the drive letter for my USB flash drive is E. Now that I know what these drive letters are, I'm able to copy the install files. To copy the files, I use another command prompt tool called Xcopy. The command I will run is xcopy, followed by the drive letter for my DVD drive, which is D, followed then by an asterisk, then a dot, and then by another asterisk. Next I will add the S switch, followed by the E switch, and finally by the F switch. The S and E switches ensure that both directories and subdirectories of the DVD are copied. Meanwhile, the F switch will display the individual directories to you as they are copied. Finally, I will add the drive letter for my USB flash drive, which in my case is letter E. At first glance, this command may look a little daunting, so let me explain what it means. The command is essentially saying, copy the contents of the D drive, including the directories and subdirectories, over to the E drive, and display these directories to me as they're copied. When I press enter, the command will run. As you can see, as the files are copied, Xcopy will display the individual files to you when they're copied. It's now just a matter of waiting until the copy process is complete. This is likely to take a number of minutes. I'll warn you, at times, the copy process may appear to slow down and even freeze. However, do not interrupt the process, be patient and let it run. The copy process is likely to take a while, so I'll skip to the end so we don't have to wait. The copy process has now finished. As you can see, Xcopy is reporting that a total of 959 files were copied over to the USB flash drive. I'll now close out of the command prompt and will return to File Explorer. If I hit refresh on the File Explorer window, notice that the USB flash drive now has some data written to it. If I open the flash drive, notice that the files written to this drive are exactly the same as the files you would find on a traditional Windows 10 DVD. I will now close out of File Explorer and will return to my desktop. Well, that covers how to manually create a bootable Windows 10 USB drive. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. For more Windows 10 training videos, please see our YouTube page. And remember to subscribe to be notified instantly when we release new content. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.